Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Blue Honor Vlog. I'm Kay Williams, author of Opdeck Operation Deceit, Blue Honor, and the Trilokia Trilogy. Uh, today on the blog, I was um, going to answer the question, um, taping this a bit early, so I'm hoping that by the time this comes out, um, the Lucent Rise will be out and, and we can talk a little bit about that. Um, so The Lucent Rise is the final um, book in the Trilokia Trilogy. So some questions have come up. Is this the end of it? Will you, will you be writing anything more in the Trilokia universe? It is super tempting to just walk away. Um, you know, go out on a high note sort of thing. <coughs> I don't know. I don't know that... Um, there's always going to be a story there type of thing. I don't know how far I could take it. I don't... I don't like to write where I feel like I can't contribute anything further of value. So when I first started out in writing, for example, I was writing high fantasy, so elves and wizards. And that was great. I loved the genre. I still love reading that stuff. And... I realized at a certain point, and this was probably in my very early 20s, it's been done. And I wasn't contributing anything of value within that genre. I wasn't coming up with stories that had the strength and ability to stand among those already written or those that would be written still. And I do know other authors who do write in the genre, and they do very well. I just did not feel that I was doing well enough in there and recognizing that and walking away was important to me. So I focused on historical writing and you'll probably notice with Trilokia there is a historical fiction element in there because the world does cross over into our little earth, current times, etc. So I'm not sure um, what's there. I did keep the, um, the drafts and stuff for my early works. I have a couple of binders up over there in my work area. And, and I've thought a little bit about it. Um, I thought maybe it would be interesting to go to the other worlds. Get off of Earth and go to Agart. All, all the other planets, etc. I won't list them all. You know, <laughs> um, kind of go tell the stories of non-humans and, and get more into the sci-fi end of that. Um, I have been contemplating and I, I think I'm steering towards Agart. Um, I have a pin board that I've been filling up for a few years now. Um, I see a few of the stories that I had drafted before and how that can work. As far as sequel, Agart's going to have to take place prior to the Trilokia trilogy, so it's a prequel in, in respects, even though it doesn't deal with the story of Captain Niall. Um, so this would deal with... Spoiler alert. So you might want to click off now. This would deal with the conflict and um, Belial and, and how things kind of precipitated out of control there and all of that stuff. So it's going to go back closer to that and show them trying to infiltrate, you know, another world, etc., and take it over in order to use it as a base for their operations. Um, Thank you. Jahanam, Jahanam um, Denava have their fingers in a lot of pots, so they're trying to come in through all sorts of different cracks and uh, figure out a way, a way to get back and take over and, and to resume what they had. We all know that that's not really possible considering what was done and, um, and who they are now. They have changed substantially, but you know, a flaw of uh, people even is to not be able to let go of the past and the things that you believe that you deserve or should have. Um, 
not seeing how that is destroying you, holding you back, etc. So this may be an aspect of their journey that they have to experience um, before they can turn around, if they will turn around, as we know. Some Atman do not turn around, the majority do not. Um, and Belial is a very bad, bad <laughs> guy. Um, he is a world destroyer. Um, he crushes Atman. You know, he feeds on them. He's not a good guy. Uh, no matter what they tell you, you know, always remember they're feeding on others. So narcissists will try to tell you, I'm not really bad. I'm just drawn that way and the circumstances cause this, but this is my only way to survive is to suck energy off of other beings, etc. It is. But, you know, you can't tell them that. They they believe that they're in the right and then let them tell their story. So anyway, um, going into Agart would be interesting. Um, the way that I've kind of seen it is that it will be a kind of technological past for them. So it's going to it's going to have to be more advanced than the earth was at that point in time, but not so advanced that, you know, they're gallivanting around the universe, etc. yet. Um, close. <laughs> they can get pretty far, but not that far. Um, otherwise, you know, everything would probably be off. And I, I just kind of want to think about that, that time span, etc. explore a similar, you know, evolution trajectory for them to humans, because humans are very much like Agartians, etc. So that's where I'm at right now, is just kind of letting that brew and thinking about that, seeing if I have something there, or maybe there's another planet, you know, that I'll end up choosing that I feel has a better series of stories to tell. Um, and, and maybe I will uh, shy away from the material that I, I've already kind of got, you know, drafted and laying around gathering dust. That happens, you know, authors don't publish everything that they have. A lot of it goes into the wastebasket. I've kept mine for years, thinking I would do something with it, and this could be it, and maybe not. So I know that seems like not quite a definitive answer, but I am thinking about it. Um, there's so much more, you know, it, it was, it was a lot of world building and there is a lot of room, I think. I just don't know if it will be me writing it or if, if somebody else would uh, want to take that over and, and try to tell that story. That would be cool. <laughs> but, um, uh, there's other stories that I, I want to write too, historical fiction, um, screenplays that I have. So I'm very busy, you know, it's like, it looks like, you know, like OPGO, which um, I'll talk about next month. 2014 was the year that I introduced the article saying, I'm going to write this. This is the title of the book and OPDEC does have a, um, have a sequel to it. And I've been contemplating a sequel to OPGO even, and it's like, I have a draft. So I have to work on that draft and, and see where we go from there. Um, it would be nice to see Karsten again. I know a lot of readers loved him. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm really busy. I'm raising my daughter. And I've been in a couple film festivals uh, in 2020 and just pursuing those goals. So it kind of takes you off track. You know, there's not time for everything. and. So that's why I'm reluctant to say, oh yeah, that's, that's coming. It might not be for another five to ten years that, that I get to that, or that you see anything from it is more realistic. Because if I did take that material, I'd have to take it and get it into the computer and rework it and, and see if it works on that planet um, with those ideas. And it's an effort because, you know, I mean, it's... It was written completely for something else, but it might work. I think it will work. I did use the princess's name um, in The Loose and Rise. Uh, she is a, a second Kasi, so the first one will be spoken about 
if I do the Outer Chronicles. Title's there. <laughs> you know, now people watching this are probably like, you're just gonna write it, it's just gonna happen. But I have to, I have to let it play out in my head and think about all the aspects because there are characters that I wanna bring in. Um, their younger selves, different points um, prior to Captain Miles' story. So it won't be Mile. She won't be there. It won't be Gediel. Um, could be some others. Um, Siaya. She. I've thought about she coming in. Um, and it kind of makes sense that she and Siaya. So I'm like, slowly, you know, that sculpture is coming together. So that's my answer. Um, I guess in a way, yeah, it's, it's coming. But <laughs> I'm reluctant to answer because I don't really have anything to show you or share with you about it. So enjoy the trilogy. You know, start with the Shadow Soul, Burning Down, and then the Lucent Rise. It's a hell of a ride. It's hyper-violent. <laughs> Uh, it deals with a lot of, um, you know, tough subjects, uh, rape and, and domestic violence, etc., and, and struggle, like that war, etc. So you see the historical fiction um, aspects in there and, and the realism. So there's a lot to unpack and there's a lot to look at. Um, it's very rich, very rich, a lot of cool things going on. In, in those books. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below, and I'll see you here next month. Thanks.